In this topic, we're going to look at the introduction to biotechnology, and then we're going to discuss bioleaching. So, by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what is biotechnology? What do biochemical reactions use? What examples of using microbes in the food industry? What examples of biochemical industrial products? Then we're going to look at what is bioleaching? What microorganisms are used in bioleaching? How is bioleaching carried out? We're going to look at the example of how copper is extracted using microorganisms. And then finally, what are the advantages and disadvantages of bioleaching? And what are the different bioleaching techniques? So what is biotechnology? Biotechnology is the application of scientific engineering principles to the production of material using biological agents. So biotechnology includes genetic engineering, which we've discussed, microbial products, for example, enzymes, microbes, for example, yeast, bioremediation, using animal cells to produce monoclonal antibodies, plants, and different purification processes. So biochemical reactions in industry use microbial cells, animal cells, plant cells, and purified enzymes or antibodies. Okay, examples that you've come across of using microbes in the food industry include making cheese, making yogurt, and making buttermilk. So these are the different bacteria that are used, or microorganisms. Saccharomyces and lactobacillus are used in making clear and opaque beer as well. Okay, examples of biochemical industrial products include cells, such as single cell proteins and starter cultures, such as baker's yeast. Chemical feedstocks include ethanol, butanol, acetic acid, citric acid, and lactic acid, as well as food additives. Proteins include enzymes, antibiotics, antibodies, vaccines, and amino acids. Right, let's move on to what is bioleaching. Bioleaching is the use of chemoautotrophic microorganisms to extract metals from ores. So these are colorless bacteria that manufacture carbohydrates from inorganic raw materials. And they use the energy from oxidizing some reduced substance in the environment. The free energy released by the oxidation is then used in carbohydrate manufacture. So here you can see an example. Carbon dioxide is being used to make a carbohydrate. So the energy is being used in that synthesis of the carbohydrate. So what are some examples of microorganisms used in bioleaching? Here's some examples, I'm not going to pronounce them. There's one, two, three, four examples. Okay, let's have a look at bioleaching of metals. So leaching is the conversion of insoluble metal sulfides into water-soluble metal sulfates. So this process can be accelerated by increasing the temperature and it uses naturally occurring microorganisms to increase the rate at which this process occurs. Microbes produce the leaching chemicals and provide the most efficient reaction space for bioleaching to occur.
So here you have a block of pyrite, which comprises iron and sulfur. Bacteria can oxidize the iron from state 2 plus to state 3 plus, uh, 3 plus, and the sulfide to sulfate, which makes sulfuric acid. This means that the conditions are very acidic. Bacteria are classified according to the temperatures at which they're active. So these include mesophiles, which um, work at about 30 to 42 degrees Celsius, moderate thermophiles, and then you've got extreme thermophiles, which operate or work at 65 to 85 degrees Celsius. Okay, let's have a look at a case study, the extraction of copper. Copper is in the form of chalcopyrite, often a waste material. So it's a low-grade ore, and it contains copper and iron. Extraction involves dissolving the mineral, oxidizing it to leave copper 2 plus ions, and then finally separating out the metal. So let's have a look at the process in a little bit more detail. The ore is dissolved by pumping acidified water onto large heaps of it. So here you can see a sprinkler with acidified water is being pumped, or the water is being pumped onto the iron ore. If we zoom in to see what's actually happening, this brown blob represents the bacteria. The iron 2 sulfide is oxidized to iron 3 sulfate on the cell surface membrane of the bacteria. The electrons released in the reaction pass into the bacterium to release energy for the synthesis of the organic material in the bacteria. The iron 3 ions then oxidize insoluble copper sulfide to soluble copper sulfate and sulfuric acid is produced. So the solution of copper sulfate can then be collected in shallow ponds. During this process, sulfuric acid is produced and the pH may fall as low as pH 2. So the bacteria, Thiobacillus feroxidans, is able to tolerate this level of acidity. Now there are two ways that the copper can be extracted from the copper sulfate. The first is to use scrap iron metal, which is represented by the dark squares in this diagram. So what happens is the iron from the iron metal donates electrons to the copper, according to that equation there. And the copper gains electrons, so it's the oxidizing agent. While the iron loses electrons, so it's the reducing agent. The metallic copper is then scraped from the scrap iron. Now instead of adding scrap iron metal, the copper sulfate can be extracted using electrolysis. So a current is applied to the copper sulfate solution and then the copper collects on the cathode. Okay, some examples of metals extracted using bioleaching include copper, lead, zinc, arsenic, nickel, molybdenum, gold, silver, and cobalt.
Benefits of bioleaching. Now, compared to traditional methods of extracting metals, such as mining and smelting, bioleaching has a number of advantages. The main one is that it's cheaper because it's a simple process with no complex machinery and therefore low maintenance costs and fewer workers. The microorganisms are self-replicating so they can be recycled. And the process uses little energy as it's carried out at low temperatures and atmospheric pressures. There are few safety hazards. And the waste product is less hazardous and so it's easier and cheaper to remove. Metals can be extracted from low-grade ores. Now all these factors mean that the bioleaching can be used in remote areas and where deposits of ore are small. So extracting metals by other methods would be uneconomical in these situations. Disadvantages of bioleaching, the process is slow. It occupies a large area and is often unsightly. It does require a considerable amount of water and it produces some pollution in the form of sulfuric acid. This could leak into the surrounding ground and surface water. And copper and iron wastes are toxic to plants. Finally, Bioleaching can either be done in situ, which is direct bioleaching, or indirect, which is in vats. So just comparing the two, direct involves low-grade ores, it's low cost, but it is poorly controlled and it does have a long leaching time. And it does produce large volumes or use large volumes. Um, <clears throat> indirect involves concentrates, it's high cost, but there is good control. It has a short leaching time and small volumes. Okay, in summary, see if you can answer these questions. What is biotechnology? What do biochemical reactions use? What are examples of using microbes in the food industry? What are examples of biochemical industrial products? What is bioleaching? What microorganisms are used in bioleaching? How is bioleaching carried out? How is copper extracted using microorganisms? What are the advantages of bioleaching? What are the disadvantages of bioleaching? And then finally, what are the different bioleaching techniques? And that concludes our lesson, the end.